it's your boy the knockout artist and anybody who starts their video with it's your boy is the mongoloid and you're not a knockout artist you're a con artist with fixed fights furthermore you are severely deluded about the future of your boxing career listen to this lunatic i'm very proud of you i think it's cool because i was i was thinking about it the other day but at the time you're going to the olympics in two years and then that's going to be when i'm probably going to be fighting for a world championship oh my god oh my god the level of delusion jake paul thinks he will be fighting for a boxing world championship in two years how how he has thus far fought tomato cans and expired mma fighters all of his knockouts look fishy I've broken that down before. He's about to fight a senior citizen who walks with a cane, and he sees that career trajectory leading to a world championship in 24 months. The level of delusion is off the charts with this boy. And so we both could potentially be world champions, number one in the world together. The Olympic champion, yeah. And right. I think that might be the, like, the first couple to do that. I don't know. Oh my God. Ugh, I want to vomit. So his girlfriend is a very high level speed skater. He's saying, you're going to be world champ and I'm going to be world champ. And I think we're the only power couple in the world who are both world champions. Ugh. Oh my God. I mean, it's one thing if you already are both world champions and you say that, that's still nauseating, sucking yourself off on camera like that, but you haven't even done it. And the funny thing about it is, and I'm, I'm just saying it now that, um, when I do fight for a world championship, I'm going to knock the guy out. Like, it's not going to be like a close fight or anything. I'm going to fucking start to them. Like, I already know it. I already feel it. I've seen it happening. So, oh, God, the amount of cringe. And the funny thing is, I'm going to knock him out in the first round. Yeah, yeah that's what's going to happen. I'm going to start him. Yeah, I already saw it in my head. <laughs> the way he's, he, he, talk, he talks like a five-year-old. He talks like a five-year-old. And then I'm going to become Superman. It's going to be crazy because I'm going to fly into space. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be so crazy. That's how he talks. Listen to this clown. And the funny thing about it is, and I'm, I'm just saying it now that um, when I do fight for a world championship, I'm going to knock the guy out. Like it's not going to be like a close fight or anything. I'm going to start to them. Oh my God. I can't, I can't believe, I can't, I can't, I can't even imagine being friends with this guy, being in the room when he says this stuff. Listen to how he says this. The cringe. And the funny thing about it is, and I'm, say, I'm just saying it. And the funny thing is about it, and I'm just saying, I'm going to knock him in the first round. Like it already happened. Wow. Wow. But let's get to Jake talking about the Mike Tyson fight specifically. Well, I want to see how hard he hits, Mike. I, Mike, I, I really want to see, bro. Let's see all the legends, the myths, because you're Iron Mike Tyson, but I have an iron chin. People know that. Like, We, we do? Pe people know that? You have an iron chin. Who, who's tested your chin? Who's tested your chin, buddy? Ben Askren? Who tested your chin? How do we all know this? Now, if that wasn't absurd, listen to this. Obviously. There's no nerves in you at all about this. No, not at all. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Like I can't, I literally can't wait to look across the ring and see him and give him a fucking death stare. Wow. Oh my God. I, I'm sure Tyson will be absolutely terrified. He'll be absolutely terrified looking across the ring at a Disney kid giving him the death stare. Uh, Tyson might just jump out of the ring. Just chuck his walking cane in the air and dive out of the ring. He's going to be so terrified. I mean, he's faced Evander Holyfield. He's faced six foot five Lennox Lewis. But forget all that. That's not scary. Being across the cage from the Vine Star, that'll put the fear of God into you. Is he wearing panties? What is this? Look at this. Are you kidding me? The degeneracy. He's just sitting here naked. Or maybe a thong? Disgusting and disturbing. And frankly, shocking. He's a monster. He's a monster exposing himself to children. Because those are the people watching him. They're looking at this. This is what the kiddies are looking at right now. Repulsive. Degeneracy. A puppet of the Illuminati. I need to clean this now. I literally can't wait to look across the ring and see him and give him a death stare. Well, how was it the first? Oh my God. 
Do you see that? Look at this. Look at this asshole. What is that hair? Now, I broke down this ramen-headed retard's hairstyle before in a previous video, but it just never ceases to amaze me. And this looks even worse because now he's crammed this baseball hat on there, but pulled out the little strings of noodles. Because you wouldn't want to hide those, right? You got to show those off. What an absolute mouth-breathing mongoloid to think this looks good. Because he sees that that's how Jake Paul wears his hat. That's how Logan Paul wears their hat. And I've made fun of that stupid style before. But why are you copying it? Can't you see how bad it looks? And it looks even worse on you. Dude, with this hat, okay, and this hair, it honestly looks like somebody dumped a bowl of ramen noodles on his head and left the bowl there. It looks like he went to a ramen house, okay, ordered a bowl of soup, and when it came out, he got into an argument with the waiter, and the waiter just dumped the bowl on his head, left it there, and walked off. Tell me that doesn't look like a bowl with ramen sticking out. Tell me. Look at these curls. Let's, let's, let's zoom in on this. Look at this. Look at this asshole's hair. How can anybody think this looks good? How can anybody go out of the house looking like this? How can anybody go on a large podcast looking like this? And here's the thing. This guy, he's a, he's a good looking fellow and he's actively making himself look worse. Why? Why would you do this? How do you, how can you possibly think this looks good? Do girls find this attractive? I would, I would ask the girls in my audience, but there aren't any. It's a sausage fest down here in the sewer. In fact, it's getting so bad down here that I'm afraid it might start getting gay, like a prison. Now, I'm not gonna turn gay. I'm the straightest man alive. It says so on the bio of my YouTube channel. But I'm worried for you guys. There's no girls down here. Just a bunch of male rats running around. I hope it doesn't turn to that. I hope some girls show up eventually. But the point is, this guy looks ridiculous and I'd be shocked if women find this attractive. But what do I know? I'm just a dude in a sewer, surrounded by rats. You guys came face to face for the first time just a couple of days ago. What was that that face to face like? It, I just laughed. Jake just laughed. He just laughed in Tyson's face because he's such a badass with his death stare. I don't know if Mike Tyson is the best boxer of all time, but he was definitely the meanest. But Jake faces off with him and just laughs, just laughs in his face. Unbelievable, unbelievable. The lack of respect. Jake Paul thinks Conor McGregor is jealous of him. Listen to this. So then there's also online, there's, there's KSI and Conor McGregor saying that the interest is low for this fight. Ironically, it's clearly the numbers are showing this is the highest interest you've ever had for a fight. Yeah. So, Connor, um, you're saying the interest is low for the fight, but the last fight you announced, there was a thousand articles written in a multiple day span to, you know, people talking about your last fight. Um, in that same multiple day span, there was 10,000 articles written about this. So that is so stupid. That is such a dumb metric. The whole, hey, there was 500 articles for your last fight and there was 10,000 for mine or whatever numbers he threw out. Okay, moron. That doesn't mean you've set up a good fight. It means you've set up more of a gonzo show. Okay? Thought experiment. Instead of Mike Tyson, the fight was Jake Paul on Netflix fights. The world's oldest living woman. That get a million articles in a one day span. Does that mean... The interest you're getting in your fight is good interest? You fool. I'm telling you, those 10,000 articles aren't saying, oh my God, this is such a great fight. We are so happy for Mike Tyson. We can't wait to see a senior citizen back in the ring. The thing is, when you're a deluded person, you view everything in your world, everything that happens through your deluded lens. So you, you only see things in a positive light for you. Not, oh my God, I made such a mistake. There's 10,000 articles calling me a moron for calling out an old man. No, he sees, oh, 10,000 articles. Oh my God, everybody loves me. He's not done. Listen to this. Just no fight ever has done these numbers in terms of like face-off views, like Instagram reels, just on our... Oh my God. You can't be this stupid, can you, Jake? No fight in history has ever had so many Instagram reels. Hey, asshole, how long has Instagram been around? And how long has professional boxing been around? 
Take the span of time that pro boxing has been around and how long Instagram has been around. Guys, I compare the numbers between my fight on Netflix and Muhammad Ali versus Joe Frazier and we got more likes on Instagram. Instagram wasn't around before, idiot! Oh my god. This is what I mean when you see the, the world through your deluded lens. Everything is seen in a way to boost your ego. Oh my god, Mike Tyson's fights in his prime never had so many likes on Facebook. What? What? You guys think I'm being mean when I call him a mongoloid. Can it be denied anymore? If you're denying his mongolacy, that makes you the mongoloid at this point. Now his girlfriend chimes in again. But they know that it's just like hard to handle for them because they've been like in a spotlight and they're just jealous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, chick. Conor McGregor is jealous of Jake Paul. Okay. The biggest UFC star in history is jealous of Jake Paul fighting a 50-year-old, 58-year-old man. Okay. Hoy. No, I think I think it just back to the path of world championship, which will I think continue to blow people's minds. Continue to blow people's minds. So thus far, Jake Paul's boxing career has blown our minds. It's blown my mind how cringy it's been, how he just fights old fighters, how his knockouts all look very fishy, how he's now fighting a senior citizen. But it's not blowing my mind in a positive way. The level of grandiose delusion. I'm telling you, this guy, he just has yes men around him. And the person I blame the most is his therapist. I did an entire episode on this lunatic woman. All right, enough out of him. Let's see what his girlfriend thinks about this fight. Babe, what do you think about me fighting Mike? Do you think I'm going to win? Well, Be honest. No, I think you're going to win. <laughs> Did you catch that? Did you catch the Freudian slip? No? Listen to it again. Babe, what do you think about me fighting Mike? Do you think I'm going to win? Well, Be honest. No, I think you're going to win. Did you notice that? Babe, do you think I'm going to win? No, I think you're going to win. That was a Freudian slip. She didn't even realize. She stated it that way. Do you think I'm going to win? No, I think you're going to win. The no was the truth. That little subconscious slip. Listen to it again. Do you think I'm going to win? Well, Be honest. No, I think you're going to win. No, I think you're going to win. Wow. She doesn't believe in you, Jake. She doesn't believe in you. Just he has that power forever. Well, we got to talk about that because that's that's been a lot of people have been talking. No, what, what we got to talk about, doofus, is your hair again. Because this angle is showing even more noodle activity. Look at this. My God. Look at those tight noodles. What an absolute clown. How is this a thing? How is... How is this a thing? How is this the new style amongst young men? It is literally the worst haircut in history. And I don't want any of you saying, oh, how about the mullet? Are you kidding me? People are bringing back the mullet. It looks so good. How many famous people now are rocking a mullet? It looked awesome in the 80s. It looks awesome now. I promise you, nobody will be doing this decades from now. This will not come back. The mullet came back. This will never come back. I promise you. So what Jake is doing is already crazy. Thank you, babe. I love you. No, serious. Ugh. I love you. The amount of times Jake says, I love you, to her throughout this podcast, and I'm not sure if she even once said it back. It's so gross. Young guys, young guys watching my show, don't ever tell a woman that you love her, okay? Not when you're dating, not when you're married, not when she gives birth to your children. They don't like it. It turns them off. Women want what they can't have. So any opportunity you get to tell your significant other that you hate them, take it. It'll only strengthen your bond. Listen to a guy who lives in a sewer. But let's get back to Jake's delusion, huh? It just, I just couldn't believe it. And the fact that it's on Netflix, I think that's going to like really revolutionize the game in boxing, I think. Really? You think you're revolutionizing boxing? 
You think you're revolutionizing boxing by fighting a 58 year old man. Wow. I think streaming could potentially be like a very bright future for the sport. And yeah, I don't think you're making anything brighter for the future of the sport. I think you're putting the final nails in the coffin here. The whole influencer boxing thing, which you and your brother started and KSI really, really made boxing look bad. And now this, this is just the chef's kiss fighting a 58 year old Mike Tyson. But this is revolutionizing boxing. I mean, I guess it is. If now it becomes the norm to beat up geriatric people, right? That hasn't been done before. So in a way he is revolutionizing it. Anyway, Jake Paul, Jake Paul's going to motivate you. Listen to this. It's all of it's, it's surreal. And it, it just goes to show like people could really unlock and accomplish anything they want if they continue to open the doors of opportunity and continue to work hard, you know? Yeah. Or if they continue to suck the devil's dong, I covered in my last video, Jake Paul's new Illuminati dong going up to his mouth. If you haven't seen that, you got to go check it out. He's got the all seeing eye of the Illuminati with a peepee -pee going up to his mouth. The all seeing dong. That's how you get these opportunities. It's not just from working hard. Sure, some work harder than others, but there's a lot of hardworking people who don't get to this level of fame and fortune and opportunity. There's a handful of people at this level. Yeah, it's him, Logan Paul and KSI. They're the hardest workers in the world. The rest of us are just lazy ass losers. Okay. Now, this next part, I really want you to pay attention to, okay? He's discussing how the Mike Tyson fight came together. Trying to find the right fight, the right, fight, the right time frame, the right event. We knew we wanted to target this summer, so we just started making calls. We called Tommy Fury was one of the names, and I, he he said no. Uh, he want so this is this is an important point. So it was Jake and his team that came up with this idea to do a big fight, do it on Netflix, and then find a fighter. Okay, so they went to Netflix first, and Netflix says, "Yeah, great, let's do it." And then it was on Jake and his team to find a fighter. And as he said, the first person he went to was Tommy Fury for a rematch. And Tommy Fury said no, because he wanted more money. This is important. Hang on. Then the Mike conversation, I was just like, yo, like we should just go for Mike. How long ago is this? This was probably like four or five months ago. Okay. All right. So they called a bunch of other fighters. They said no. So then they went for Mike Tyson and we're in talks for four months or so to get him to agree. This is a key, key piece of information that Jake proposed this fight. It was Jake's idea to fight Mike Tyson. And this is important because the people who are justifying this fight, Jake Paul's friends like Aiden Ross, their justification for this fight to defend Jake Paul against the naysayers is saying, if you're offered the Mike Tyson fight, you wouldn't turn it down. So how can you judge Jake for turning it down? Listen, this is from the previous Jake Paul podcast. Yeah, I want to say that, bro. Like anyone talking shit about you fighting Mike because anybody, and I mean anybody, is saying yes to that. Yeah. Any person is going to say yes. Mm. Making bro, the M's, first sporting event on Netflix. Netflix that's you history. Crazy? You're making M's and you're fighting the, the greatest boxer of all time. It's so easy to yeah. do though, right? It's, it's so easy from the outside. Okay, this, this, this idiot just loves hearing himself talk. He's going to go on for an hour here. But the point is, everybody on here is backing Jake up, defending him, saying, hey, you wouldn't turn it down. If Mike Tyson called you up and said, would you like to fight me for this amount of money? You would do it. But that's not the case. This wasn't Mike Tyson offering you the fight and you going, oh, I can't pass up this opportunity. It's the complete opposite. It's Jake Paul coming up with the idea. I want to fight this 58 year old man. He propositioned Mike Tyson. So this entire line of justification goes out the window. It's not how can you blame Jake? He was offered this once in a lifetime opportunity. How could he say no? There's no grounds for that. No grounds for that. This was entirely Jake's idea. You heard him say it himself. Let's get Mike. He propositioned Mike. It was his idea. So you can take this whole line of justification and shove it up your ass. Jake is entirely on the hook here for wanting to fight a senior citizen and for putting it on Netflix. To understand why Jake Paul is so deluded, you need to go back 
to that video I made where he talks with his therapist, okay, and see how this crazy woman has her hook sunk into him, messing with his brain. And you can watch that video right here. Go ahead, click on it, and prepare to descend into madness.